Hello everybody and welcome. It is Wednesday, 4 p.m. Central European time, so it's webinar time. Our webinar session centers around the topic of populism and is part of the Nova Migra, that is Norms and Values in European Migration Crisis Project funded by the EU. The Nova Migra project tackles a topical issue that has become prominent in recent years in political science, the question of the rise of populism, its connection with migration and its effects on Western democracies. The accompanying five-part webinar series covers the relationship of migration and populism from various levels of abstraction. So we'll go from the philosophical to the socio-political approaches. The presentations will be accompanied by slides summarizing the content of the presentation. The webinar, by nature, is an interactive platform, so please feel free to join the discussion through our chat feature. Your questions will be answered and your remarks discussed after the presentation. And if you have missed something or would like to listen to any of the presentations again, we'll be sending the recording of the webinars around soon. So let's get started. Last week, you heard Janusz Salamon on the relationship between anti-intellectual, anti-elite populism and democracy, and how matter triumphs over mind. This week, we are aiming at the center of the problem. Our presenter is Ms. Eva Gedu, who is going to approach populism through the question of its relationship to liberalism, more particularly the notion of post-truth, and populist politics' characteristic feature of undisguised lying. Ms. Gedu is an associate professor at John Wesley Theological College, Budapest, holds a PhD in philosophy and has been teaching at various universities in Hungary for the past decade and a half. Her main research interests include populism as a political philosophy and theories on fascism. She is looking forward to sharing her views and findings on populism with you. Please welcome Ms. Gedu and enjoy the webinar. So, uh, as uh, it was said, this is the second event of a five-part webinar series on populism within the European Union project Norms and Values in European Migration Crisis called Nova Migra. In the webinar series, the relationship of migration and populism will be discussed from various levels of abstraction and the different corresponding disciplinary perspectives. This webinar will present problems of populism from a philosophical point of view. By the following three webinar sessions, uh, four webinar sessions will be more from the perspective of political science and sociology. In this <coughs> webinar, I would like to suggest a new kind of met methodological individualist position uh, to the populist challenge. Owing to time pressure, I will present the main considerations briefly to have time for the debate on the content. Facing the challenge of the migration crisis coupled with the rise of populism, first I will present some theoretical approaches for discussing the relationship between immigration and migration and populism. In this vein, I will describe briefly the political phenomenon of populism after 945. In this context, I will address uh, uh, the, the issue of the mo uh, two most important theories on populism, the theory of uh, Margaret Canavan and uh, Ernesto Laclau and Chantal Mouffe, and finally, my own suggestion. Uh, as far as the content is concerned, this presentation focuses on discussing polemically the theories on populism, and at the end I try to make my own theoretical suggestions. <clears throat> I don't wish to overload the presentation with bibliographical references, but at the most important places, if necessary, uh, in the debate I will cite the sources. 
At the end of uh, at the end, my own suggestion for a methodological individualist position will be outlined briefly, as I said. Explaining this in, uh, position uh, is quite a com complex task, which I can't undertake here and now, but I hope I can illustrate some key points so that you can understand the essence. So, uh, uh, now first I would like to uh, discuss populism as a current political uh, uh, challenge. Since, since, since 2015, following the migration crisis, we have witnessed an unprecedented advancement of right-wing populism in the Western world. France and Germany both have very strong populist fronts, uh, and even the Anglo-Saxon world, England and the United States, which were thought to be safe heavens, demonstrate the tendency. This recent rise of populism is of great concern in relation to the future of Western democracies, since the res resilience of such liberal democracies, which until recently were believed to be the strongest, is also put to the test. This phenomenon begs the question why and how migration reinforces populism. First, I will summarize the conclusions of research on the relationship between migration and populism, and then I will move on to the theoretical identification of the problem. In order to understand the relationship between migration and the rise of populism, two aspects are to be uh, clearly dis distinguished. When does the actual phenomenon of migration create a shockwave for populism? Uh, this is the first question. And second, how is the problem of migration interpreted and ref reflected in populist propaganda? Answering our first question, uh, referring to the actual phenomenon of migration, we can say that populism doesn't necessarily increase with migration. There are also exceptions to the populism boosting effect of migration. There are countries with, with many migrants but without significant populism, like Portugal. And there are countries with strong populist tendencies exercising effective anti-migrant anti populist propaganda without a, significant, without a significant number of migrants, like Hungary. The literature concludes, concludes that attitudes towards migration, even in countries with high rates of both migration and populism, are much more determined by the population's pre-existing mentality than by the actual migration pressure itself. However, as far as populist propaganda itself is concerned, there are striking similarities among the mo most important issues in countries without migrants and those with a large number of migrants, with the natural differences arising from the migrant situation and the history of these countries. What are the main similarities? Constant elements of anti-migrant propaganda are <coughs> as follow. First, the threat of migration is always reflected as a threat to or decline of the populist civilization. However, second, anti-migrantism is a self-threat is uh, never alone, but it's always linked to the two other elements. First, the appearance of fixed assumptions, which can be spe spe specific subjects such as the leader, the enemy, or impersonal determina determinations such as order, destiny, history, etc. Second, anti liberalism is a very important point here. Anti liberalism manifests itself in a number of topics. Its main target is the EUU, but it, it also appears in the desire to reform the liberal institutional system of power sharing, or as an aversion to the predominantly left-wing and liberal-minded intellectuals. 
These two aspects, the practical phenomenon of migration and the populist thematization of migration, are linked together theoretically by the hugely important problem of the crisis. In relation to the crisis, we are theoretically forced to walk on a very thin slacks, on thin ice, and there are two theoretical dangers facing us, either ignoring the problem, sweeping it under the carpet, or over thematization. Over thematizing it. I'm sorry. As far as, far as uh, the phenomenon of migration is concerned, we must acknowledge that there may be a real crisis situation in life when it is legitimate to refer to them as crises. This includes the extremely difficult integration process and the finiteness, scarcity of assets, constraints. The responsibility of the mainstream liberal political stance should not be forgotten here. Liberal political thinking is prone to not acknowledging or ignoring these issues. For example, the diff difficulties of integration as if they would be solved by themselves. That by themselves. And immediately, and impatiently discrediting and marginalizing as racist, those who mention these difficulties. Sweeping, sweeping crisis phenomena under the carpet plays into the hands of populists in the long, long run. In France, in the early, uh, in the early uh, 17th, it was precisely because migration became an open talking point that the National Front became a major force, so National Front in France. <clears throat> and it was due to French populism that migration has become a permanent political topic in France. However, con constantly alluding to the crisis, the constant threat and fear point to a deepening of the crisis, not the resolution of the dif difficulties. Populism is actually characterized by a totalization and deepening of the crisis. Unfortunately, today there is a great deal of confusion about what populism is and how we can counter it effectively. We are <coughs> facing a paradoxical phenomenon in the literature on populism. Also, it has recently become a best-selling topic its literature is vast. Most of them, nonetheless, are empirical case studies in political science, the authors of which constantly complain about the conceptual blur surrounding populism. I think the current ca chaos surrounding populism is due to the combined effect of two circumstances. One of them is the transformation of the political phenomenon of populism following 945. The main feature of this transformation is the loss of the ide ideological backdrop. Contrary to the former political tendencies having a fixed ideology, there is no use in looking for a, an ideological center point in today's populism. Along with the disappearance of the ideological center, the extent to which populism can be translated to and identified with political tendencies widened. There is not only left and right wing populism, but it's also important to note that liberal politicians them, themselves often adopt and use populist elements in hope of increasing their popularity. For example, Macron, who is considered a committed liberal, has recently began, began to express anti-migrant concerns for popularity reasons. This expansion indicates that we are facing a deep-rooted stubborn phenomenon. I believe that the, this loss of ideology is not a random process, but rather is linked to the process that following the defeat of Nazism in the uh, Second World War, we can witness the widespread discrediting of power legitimizing concepts, also conferred by the discrediting of communist systems. Thus, for example, sovereignty in political philosophy and theory of law 
for the concept of feel in psychology became suspicious terms. There is also a sense of shyness in populism, for they uh, would not openly admit the extent to which they would be prone to use violence given the circumstance. What is theoretically a constant element in today's populism is the tendency to lie. The Oxford Dictionary's <coughs> word of the year 2016 was post-truth. Oxford Dictionary said the frequency of the usage of, of post-truth increased by 2,000 percent in 2016 compared with the previous year. Theoretical Theoretical difficulties reappear in connection with the reinterpretation of the phenomenon of lies. Post-truth is an adjective defined as relating to or denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appears to emotion and personal belief. The definition of lie as opposed to facts denoting truth can be fully accepted and consented by a populist too. The head of Cambridge Analytica, the cons consultancy firm that promoted Trump's 2016 election victory through Facebook da data acquisition said, it's no good fighting an election campaign on the facts because actually it's all about emotion. Uh, uh, heavy theoretical difficulties uh, uh, reappear in connection with the interpretation of the phenomenon of lies. Post-truth is an adjective defined, uh, as uh, I was said, relating to or denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential than uh, appears to emotion and personal belief. As you can see, lying is he, uh, here is perceived as denying, rejecting facts. Such an interpretation of the concept of lying is also accepted and welcomed by populists. By populists. Uh, the head of uh, uh, then uh, <clears throat> the problem is. If we simply set lies against facts, the key issue of how to make lies appear to be credible, how to present a lie as if it, it were truth, how to successfully manipulate and deliberately deceive people disappears. I think an important source of confusion surrounding populism is the concept of populism adopted by the political science which is used by most politicians, by most publications today. Populism is defined as an appeal to the people, where the people and the elite are in oppos opposing sides. Chaos is further aggravated by the concept of populism accepted by political science, which is used by most publications, as I said. This uh, paradigm in political science orig originates directly for Mar from Margaret Canavan. Can event set up a typology with two main basic types, many subtypes and further subtypes proliferating like cancerous cells because populist phenomena cannot be classified according to the appeal to the people theme. Just to give an example, Can event primarily looks at left wing movements such as the Russian Neuronic Movement or the 19th century American farmer movement which in most cases did not come to the power, to come to power. Thus, the widespread uh, First World War nationalist war propaganda initiated by European states, for example, will not smoothly fit into this typology. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Canovan is not uh, uh, 
in the case uh, uh, of Kenoman is a problem that her concept of populism is incapable of capturing the diverse reality of populism, but the, uh, and the empirical method uh, definitely foreshadows the legitimizing of populism. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in her case, uh, in the case of uh, Margaret Canavan, empirical method means uh, defining populist speech as an opinion. And if one forms an opinion, he or she uh, also believes that the, uh, they are saying, they considering true, they have values and convictions. However, in case of lies, the problem is that one is consciously lying for the sake of manipulation, that is, they are fully aware of the fact that they are not telling the truth. That is, they themselves don't believe what they are saying. <clears throat> if one is widely uh, disclosed as a liar, it can undermine their legitimacy. On the other hand, if someone believes what they are saying, I assume a subjective inner activity and effort. Facing the problem of life, thinking, and the presence of this inner activity is actually the key to recognizing someone as authentic and consequently recognizing them as a living being. Identifying populist speech as an opinion advances the speaker's personal legitimacy. Another result of this theory is that it also implicitly identifies with the concept of democracy used by populism. The essence of this concept of democracy is that the people as a collective are constituted as some kind of a counterpart to, for, for example, the elite. That is practically to say we have an enemy concept here. Uh, the other uh, uh, very important theory on populism is the political uh, uh, philosophy of, of uh, Ernesto Laclau and Chantal Mouffe. Uh, uh, Ernesto Laclau uh, said that the creation process of uh, collective identities is uh, the, the essence of populism. Not, uh, we should not lack, uh, we shouldn't uh, look for the uh, ideological content, but uh, uh, for the creation process of these uh, collective identities. Ernest <coughs> uh, uh, Laclau and Chantal Mouffe uh, say that uh, uh, for her the most important uh, theoretical source is uh, Carl Schmitt, uh, who, uh, uh, who, uh, whose concept uh, is a very serious challenge uh, to liberal thinking. Uh, I think uh, that uh, the theory of Laclau and Chantal Mouffe uh, has also uh, great disadvantages, uh, uh, but uh, uh, this theory must be seen as a huge challenge to the liberal libertarian position uh, because uh, they uh, because uh, they uh, say that uh, we uh, should see populism as a uh, as a creation pre process of of collective entities and not uh, as an ideology. Uh, 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 so uh, to get to my point, uh, I I want uh, to uh, outline briefly the uh, significance of uh, the fascism and Nazism uh, for the uh, uh, problem of populism. The issue of, pre of present day populism is in fact inseparable from the problem of fascism and anti-fascism. Uh, in my view, 
the issue of Nazism and fascism uh, not systematized cast the shadow over contemporary populism as a phenomenon and it has a significant place in the theories on populism. First, the, uh, the shape, uh, shifting of populism after 945 was due to the re devaluation ideology associated with the defeat of Nazism. Second, in the populist literature, we can see that this Hannah Arendt's theory of totalitarianism, totalitarianism, totalitarianism uh, is lurking behind Canavan's widespread populist concept in political science. Second, not only Laclau and Mouffe are openly attached to Carl Schmitt, but right-wing populism as well. Alain de Benoit has written a separate book on Carl Schmitt, and nowadays there is a great deal of uh, talk on Schmitt's impact on Trump's policies. Carl Schmitt can be considered uh, the key figure in the philosophical interpretation of populism. He also represents the connected link between the native past and the populist present at the level of ideological history, as well as bridging left and right wing populism in the present. Comparing present day populism to earlier fascist dictatorships, we can say that the key element, the rejection of primacy of the liberty of concrete personal individuals in completely unchanged. Previously, the, reject the rejection of specific personal freedom was implicit in the conceptual content. When, for example, Schmidt says that a friend-enemy relationship doesn't depend on any normative aspect, it follows that I can make any wife my enemy. I don't have to account for the motives of my hostility, example, whether the actions of the other person make him deserve my hostility, or is he a man of bad character? And that is nothing else than a normative philosophical justification of racism. Second, the most important new development of present-day populism theories in that the is that the key element, the legitimization of power, is introduced through the back door on the backwaters of methodological principles. The presence of the aspect of normativity can be found openly at the methodological level. The rejection of specific personal individual freedom nowadays takes the form of openly self-reflexive anti-methodological individualist possession. The rejection of methodological individualism, which is the essence of present-day populism, in theory in implies some sort of sincerity. For the understanding eye, theoretical assumption and assumptions are uncovered here. The fact that power has been discredited following the defeat of Nazism lies behind this situation. <clears throat> Today, members of society are no longer massacred, but merely kicked out of their jobs. They are primarily deprived of economic means, making it impossible for them to uh, publicly criticize populist power. At the same time, there is still a great deal of open violence on its periphery, as evidenced, for example, by the inhuman treatment of migrants at the national borders. In European populism, as in Hungary, for example, but also in Trump's America. The most important element of theoretical sincerity is that the legitimacy of power does not really uh, depend on the uh, ideological content, but on the way in which collective validity is, co in, is constituted in public speech and propaganda. When present day popul populism theories take the concept of the collective out of the scope of criticism of methodological individualism, the following conclusions emerge. All anti-methodological individualist positions are theoretically identifiable as preparation for populism. So empirical disciplines such as sociology, political science, 
or historiography are not innocent methodologically since they unequivocally <coughs> reject methodological individualism. Second, but many philosophical theories are in equally effective, such as the philosophy of the postmodern post-structuralism, or to a considerable extent, Anglo-Saxon analytical philosophy. When the present-day populism theories take the concept of the collective out of the criticism of methodological individualism, they also reveal their most vulnerable side, because it is said that it is the methodological individualist position focusing on the concrete personal that could theoretically effectively challenge populism. And uh, now I would like to uh, uh, tell uh, the outlines of uh, this uh, uh, methodological individualist position. The simulta simultaneous presence of these uh, two conditions, the insistence of lying as a prerequisite and the rejection of the possibility of methodological individualism criticism, together provide the Achilles heel of populism. If an effective methodological individualist position is created that can rationally understand the method of constituting collectives, then the theoretical margin of populism would cease to exist. Five, now I would like to explain briefly that it is not only necessary but also possible to develop such a theory. This self-invalidating condition must be seen as a huge challenge to the libertarian position. Uh, so the self-invalidating condition uh, of the theories of Laclo and Mouffe. Uh, and and uh, uh, this huge challenge must uh, itself be philosophical and not simply liberal political philosophical in character. Libertarian philosophy breaks away on a key point from present-day liberal political philosophies. It takes very seriously the criticism of Laclo and Mouffe, which is in agreement with Carl Schmitt, of liberal political philosophies, especially that of Habermas, and takes the inevitable presence of antagonism in human existence and a premise. The necessity of violence also follows from the presence of antagonism. But unlike uh, Laclau and Mouffe, I don't encode the primary presence of antagonism in the intersubjective space, but place it inside, in the structure of subjective freedom. The antagonistic relations among people are expressions and results of fractures within subjectivity. In my view, however, it attributes a formal dynamic to constituting the co concept of the collective, depriving it uh, of the question of origin in the concrete agent. In fact, the populism concept of Canavan and Laclau are not so far apart in that ne neither raises the question of whether the imprint of self-reference originating from specific persons can be identified in the inception of the concept of people in propaganda. However, by presuming need, like law, like Canovan presupposes the presence of capacity for action in politics. However, however, I believe the situation to be completely different. Collective identities are inherently untrue constructs, the assumption of which has a rationally identifiable dynam dynamic, the basis of which uh, could be a methodological individualism that focuses on the self-referential dyna dynamics of concrete individuals and identifies in a normative sense two choices. This is very, very important. A poor decision reaching, reached in bad faith and able to endure the difficulties arising from self-reliance and freedom or a conscious decision that accepts and upholds the tension in self-reliance as, as an indispensable accompanying phenomenon of individual freedom. The rhetorical possibility of as, assuming the concept of collective is the continuous self-reflection 
on the self and endangerment of the concrete individual speaking as a kind of constant state of crisis. The continuous reflection of the crisis can also be considered a lie, which, however, leads us to the deep existential underpinnings of the concrete individual's decision made in bad faith. So, uh, and uh, uh, as uh, at the end of my presentation, I uh, would like to uh, mention the names of Jean Paul Sartre and Eric Fromm, who uh, developed a uh, similar theory during, uh, before and during the uh, Second World War, but I, this uh, new uh, concept of uh, met, uh, methodological individualism differs from the concepts of both in uh, acknowledging uh, 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 human freedom as final. So uh, this was my presentation and now I am waiting for the questions. Well, thank you very much for this wonderful lecture. I urge the audience to put questions and make remarks. I hope uh, I can be heard. But uh, before they do so, um, may I ask a question myself uh, that concerns the introductory remarks of your presentation. Uh, you, you said at the beginning that uh, the rise of populism is not directly linked with Migration, migration. So it, I think it is well explained, but can we hear a bit of more explanation to that? Thank you. Uh, uh, I uh, must say that personally, I come from Hungary, and uh, of course, the, our experiences in, in Hungary uh, concerning populism is very important in uh, this aspect. So we. Uh, uh, see here a, a quite a strong populist regime uh, without a significant number of migrants. Uh, but, uh, for example, in Hungary, populist propaganda uh, is, uh, is very uh, strong determined uh, by uh, anti-migration uh, effects and uh, uh, slogans. Uh, so we, we can see that the, the uh, uh, propaganda against migrants can be very effective and very successful without uh, the presence of uh, migrants. This, this was just an example, but it's important to see that uh, populist uh, speech, populist propaganda is, a, 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 in their sense, uh, independent from, from the issue of, uh, from the real presence of migrants. Okay, thank you very much. So far, there is no question, as I see. No question yet, but I urge the audience that uh, that uh, they can, all participants can uh, put questions and make remarks. I'm sorry. I see the audience here in our room. If there is a question here, uh, yes, please. Okay, so. Um, um, can could you um, somehow summarize your um, new approach to the problem of populism in a more everyday type um, language so that even those who are not philosophers can get a grasp of it, can understand it? <laughs> Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I will try uh, to outline this position uh, uh, more simple. So uh, I think that uh, during our lives, every people uh, faces uh, 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 situations of crisis in, in uh, their personal lives. And these critical uh, personal situations uh, involved that uh, we, uh, in some points of, of our li uh, life, have to choose uh, if we are ready to accept the possibility to die, because we are really endangered, we, are, we can be really in critical uh, situations. And I think uh, most people escape uh, 
uh, this situation, they, they don't want to be aware of the uh, uh, of this critical uh, uh, of this uh, critical points, critical situations. But even if they escape and they don't want uh, uh, to acknowledge the presence of this uh, 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 situation to, to make a decision between the exception, uh, the possibility of our death, uh, they, uh, after uh, ignoring uh, the uh, presence of the uh, situation uh, for, uh, to make a decision, they uh, must make a decision. So uh, the key point is in my theory that even even if people want to escape decision, they make a decision, and, and but this will be this so-called poor decision or weak decision. Do you think it's a it's a present day phenomenon? I so see, yes. This is a modern. Who this is this approach of human beings to life. Uh, this is a very difficult problem. I think I don't think so. I think uh, uh, people in uh, living in human societies always uh, had uh, situations where, uh, like that. But uh, in modern societies, this, this problem uh, appears much more effectively, much more uh, is much more in the foreground. As earlier, but I, I think this uh, um, uh, problem is uh, actual in in all societies. So that uh, people make always decisions. They are not all, not uh, uh, only educated by their parents or, or by by the teachers, uh, but uh, uh, during the process of uh, of uh, getting adult. They uh, always make uh, decisions, and uh, and this process, process uh, is uh, is not over when when they uh, are adults. Uh, uh, I I can say uh, uh, it will be even more more and more uh, difficult uh, in uh, when they are adults. But uh, this uh, this point uh, of making decisions during our life, this is I, I think the, the key point in these theories. Thank you very much for this answer. Now we have a question from Andres. Uh, hopefully we can see it on the screen. The question goes like this. Given your psychological and existentialist understanding of populism, how do you explain that populism was not a constant feature of the recent history, but only emerged within the last 25 years? Thank you for the question. Please answer yeah. uh, Thank you for the question. So I uh, I have uh, uh, said that uh, natism and populism has uh, uh, lots of uh, common features. So uh, and I, I try to uh, explain what what is common in this uh, in, in this phenomena and what is the difference. So I I think the key key feature of populism. So this anti uh, methodological individual list uh, position was present even earlier. And uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, existentialist understanding of populism uh, can uh, can be uh, uh, seen also on, the, on uh, referring the problem of power and of, uh, violence. So I, uh, I don't think we, we need uh, to explain the uh, phenomenon of populism on an empirical level, we we need to go uh, more deep, uh, and uh, then we we can find uh, this exist existentialist and psychological understanding of populism. Thank you for the answer. So far, no other question yet. Okay, thank you for, for these uh, answers. No question yet, so I urge the audience to put more questions. In case there is more question, then of course we conclude uh, our session.
Is there any other or more question? Any remarks from the participants? Well, then that concludes our session today. Please don't forget that uh, we'll have another webinar next Wednesday. Please join us then. Thank you very much, uh, Eva, for this wonderful lecture. Thank you for the audience. Thank you uh, for the remarks and questions from the audience. And please join us next week again from all of us here at the Objective Budapest Studio, webinar studio. It's goodbye.